Good morning, everybody. All right, that was weak. There's too many of y'all for it to be that weak. Good morning. It is a blessing to have everyone here this morning. Welcome to this time of worship. Let's get ourselves ready, get our hearts and minds prepared as the choir starts us off this morning as we gather to worship today. Thank you, choir. It's good to see everybody this morning. Welcome to this combined fifth Sunday service as we celebrate uh, the various missions and outreach projects of our church. I know folks are still coming in. Do make sure that you look around. We have kind of an odd seating when we have the tables like this, but it's an opportunity to get to know each other a little better. So hopefully uh, look around. If you see somebody you don't know, make sure you get to know them a bit better today. Uh, more on that a little bit later. Before we do anything else, just a couple of quick announcements. I want to remind you that uh, we have Sunday Fun Day this evening for the children. Uh, please make sure that you come and are a part of that. When this service is over today, we do have a meal, a fellowship time together. You've got to eat lunch somewhere. And besides, it's yucky outside. Stay put. Enjoy the meal. And we'll be having uh, some, some barbecue that's been done up. It should be absolutely wonderful. And uh, we hope that you'll stay and be a part of that immediately following the service this morning. I uh, also wanted to lift up, we're going to have a time of prayer later in the service, but I wanted to lift up um, Dawn Gilmore. Uh, some of y'all know Dawn, that's Monica Simmons' sister. Um, she is under hospice care, and it's just a matter of time. was with the family this morning. Uh, so just ask that you continue to be in prayer for that family today um, as they go through this time. Um, I know there's other prayer concerns. We'll lift those up in a little bit. But before we do anything else this morning, take a look around this room. Take a look around this room. We're going to give you a couple of minutes, if you would. Would you stand up and greet one another? If there's somebody you don't know, maybe somebody attends another service than you, make sure you say hey and introduce yourself. Now that we've had a chance to greet each other this morning, if you return to your seats but don't sit down, we're going to begin by worshiping and celebrating this morning. I am grateful today we have all of our musical components here, so we have a combination of the Emerge and the Nuevo Pacto Band this morning. Of course, the choir was singing. We are blessed in so many ways, and so we want to celebrate that today. Would you stand as we sing and begin worship this day? Is 
name above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same, praise the name. Let's sing Jesus. Jesus, name above all names, the one who reigns forever, still the same.
allora fuori in terra. Santificato sia il tuo nome, venga il tuo nome. I want also to invite the children to come forward to go a little bit. No children? Okay. Never mind. <laughs> God bless you. Let us continue worshiping the Lord. Won't you all stand up and worship the Lord with us this morning? We're about to do offertory. Praise the 
altars where you meet us. Take me there, take me there. What you need is just an offering. It's right here, my life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're a fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed, I want to be tried by fire, purified, you take whatever you desire, love is my life, I want to be tried. Have a seat and let's pray. Almighty God, we sang a bold prayer. You call us to be consumed. You call us to give you all of our hearts, minds, souls, and strength. As we gather this day to worship, we first ask your forgiveness, for we confess that we rarely give you all that we are. We hold back and we serve ourselves.
Remind us, Lord, that you have called us to be your hands and your feet in the world. You've called us to be your witnesses in our Jerusalems and our Judeas, in Samaria and in the outermost parts of the world. Lord, we ask once again that your refiner's fire would sweep through. Burn away the things that have no eternal significance. Make us stronger and more purified that we might go into the world and proclaim your good news to all we need. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence among us. And we simply ask that you would touch our hearts, reform and refire us, and send us into the world and your people. Now and always, not of our own power, but in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Amen. We are blessed this morning uh, to have a dear friend of mine uh, come and, and share with us. Uh, Pastor Isaac Chumbadi is from Jinja, Uganda, and I had the privilege of meeting Isaac almost 20 years ago. Uh, I've told the story before. Um, I had no intention of going to Africa. It was not something that I had planned. It wasn't a place that I was going to. Uh, and one day the bishop called and said, guess what? You're going to Africa. And, uh, and I said, yes, sir, and, and went over there and had the privilege of meeting Isaac and, and uh, meeting uh, so many of the brothers and sisters there in Uganda and, and absolutely fell in love with beautiful country, beautiful people, and just a marvelous way that the Holy Spirit is working and growing and doing amazing things that I share with some of the Sunday school classes. When I met Isaac, he was the pastor of one church uh, that had about 40 members in it, um, and then in the intervening years, he was made the district superintendent of the Jinja district, which then had 12 churches. Uh, today, there are 70 churches in the Jinja district as they continue spread the gospel, hmm, 73, I said 70, 70 miles, man, 30 churches, I'm sorry, uh, but his church went from 30 to 40 members to 200 members, uh, there at one young central, uh, and we were talking, I don't want to steal this thunder, I want y'all to talk to him today, uh, but as he shared with our outreach team last night, uh, they've had an active ministry reaching out uh, to some of the, the, the rougher elements, and then we called the ghetto boys in their area. And they had, uh, they've had over 80 baptisms uh, of, of those folks. And so uh, he's a mighty man of God. The Spirit is working in marvelous ways. Uh, I'm delighted he's here to share, to share with you about the ministry that you've participated and cooperated in and been partners in. Uh, but most of all, I am thankful to God that I can call him my friend and my brother. And I'm delighted to welcome Pastor Isaac Chumbani to come and share this morning. morning. Yeah, I'm free, privileged to be here today. And I'm very happy for your invitation. Uh, Reverend Larry, thank you for allowing me to stand here. And we thank you for your prayers and your support in Uganda. May the Lord bless you. Um, he has already introduced me, but maybe you have not heard. I'm Isaac Chambade. I'm a Muganda by tribe from Muganda in Uganda. I have a family of 10 people I'm taking care of. My wife sends greetings. And uh, the entire church in the Jinja district. Um... I came here to celebrate the love of God together with you. I came, I came here to thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing in our lives in Uganda and in Kodel. The Lord is so good. He's really very, very good. Um, 
I want to share with you from the book from the book of Luke chapter 17 verse 15 to 17 you will excuse me for my accent <laughs> uh, I preach in Uganda, in my country. I rarely preach in English. And you may have a problem with my accent. Okay, I request um, someone to come and uh, read. Luke 17, uh, 15 to, seven, to 17. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the story of uh, the ten lepers in the Bible. Um, I don't know whether you are familiar with the leprosy, but we have some people who, are who have leprosy in Uganda. Although it's not so much severe as it used to be in the Bible times. But here we are seeing 10 people with leprosy. And they approached Jesus. Verse 11, while he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. So when Jesus entered the village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him. And they raised their voices for assistance, for healing, because they met the healer. Who is Jesus? Jesus is our healer. He heals us. I remember during the COVID time, I fell sick, very, very sick. And it was not COVID. It was malaria, typhoid, and ulcers. I was really very, very sick. People came. They prayed for me, and I got healed. Jesus is our healer. He heals us. So this man met Jesus, the healer, and they raised their voices. Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Leprosy was a deadly disease by then. Recently, we had Ebola in Uganda. And uh, I think you have been having COVID here. And I think it's still there, some, in some places. Ebola is a deadly disease. And uh, it claimed so many people in Uganda. During this time, Jesus' time, this biblical time, there was also leprosy. And it was a deadly disease. One who had it was regarded as unclean. If attacked, it attacked the, the nervous system and it disfigures the skin, the skin of the victim, 
and bonds. The, the disease was disastrous. If a person was found with leprosy, he was isolated, taken away from the city. No one desired to touch him, and no one desired to come close to him. Like Ebola in Uganda, if you attacked with Ebola, no one even you, no one will come close to you. If a person was found with leprosy after being examined by the priest, was to tear his clothes, let his hair hang loose, cover his upper mouth, and he was unclean. He had to leave and go outside the country. And he had ten men with leprosy coming to Jesus to approach Jesus. And they raised their voices. They were praying to Jesus, have mercy upon us. Jesus, have mercy upon us. If you cry unto the Lord to have mercy upon you, he answers you. He answers our prayers. And now Jesus tells them, when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Hallelujah. Now, if you read verse 15, that's where I want to put much emphasis. Verse 15 and 16. Now, one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. He turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. When he got healed, and this guy was uh, a Samaritan, after receiving his miracle, he went back to Jesus to glorify him, to thank him for the miracle, for the healing. That's why I, when I came here, when I was, uh, I told you that I've come to glorify the Lord. I've come to thank him for his goodness, for his power, for his miracles. And he shouted in Mark chapter 1 verse 40, there was also a leper. When he saw Jesus, the Bible said he knelt down and he cried very loud and said, let your will be done. If you will, heal me. Jesus' will is, to, is for us to be healed. Jesus' will is for us to be to glorify him. And now, this guy here comes back to Jesus to, heal, to, to glorify him, to thank him. The Bible says he fell flat on the ground in front of Jesus, face downward in the dust, thanking him for what he had done. And now Jesus asks, Didn't I heal the ten men? Where are the nine? The Lord has done so many things in our lives, in our homes, in our churches. But have we turned back? Have we gone back to him to say thank you? Have we gone back to glorify him? Some of the reasons why we are here today, some of the reasons why you come to church on Sunday, you come to glorify the Lord. 
you come to thank him for the good things he has done in your lives. Thank you. Are you one of the nine? Are you among the nine who did not come back? Or you are among the one person, the Samaritan, the foreigner, who came to glorify the healer? And now Jesus is asking, asking us today, where is the nine? Where is the nine? Are you among the nine who did not come back after receiving your miracle? After receiving a blessing, when I come to America here, I see you people, you are so much blessed. You are so much blessed. And I'm sure some of you complain. <laughs> but it's because you don't know how much you are blessed by God. You complain because you do not know what the Lord has done. You come to Africa and see. Larry was there and saw what, how the church is growing beside all the challenges, beside the bad roads, beside the lack of medicine, beside the droughts, beside lot of things and my friend Phil went to Kenya you come and see what the Lord is doing there come and see how the church is growing come and see how the Lord is moving come and see how people are praising the Lord how people are glorifying the Lord they come to church with an empty stomach and they spend the church four to five hours praising the Lord and they are happy America should be the country, the number one country to praise the Lord. To say thank you, Lord. Come back to the Lord. The man fell on his stomach and he said thank you. There was a man in the Bible, King Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 20. He, he contracted a life-threatening disease and he was critically sick. Then prophet Isaiah went to him. The Lord sent him to, to tell King Hezekiah that prepare your house because you are, not going to, you are going to die. It was a terrible message. It was a terrible message for a sick person. The prophet went there to tell him, you are going to die. You are not going to, to live. The Bible says he fell. He, he faced the wall, the wall and started praying. So when he prayed, the Bible tells me, the Lord answered his prayer. And he added 15 years on him. When you read 2 Chronicles chapter 13, Two started to, I think, verse 25. After receiving, he forgot the Lord. He became proud. And uh, he forgot what the Lord did for him. That's what sometimes we do. We forget what the Lord has done for us. And we are proud. We become proud. So Jesus is asking us today, where is the nine? Where 
Where is the nine? And he says, the entire hill, ten people, where are the nine? Are you among the nine or you are among the one person who came back to Christ and glorified him and thanked him for, for the miracle and thanked him for the blessing? My prayer is that we will be among the one person who came back to Christ. We should not forget. We should not forget what the Lord is good. The Lord is good. He has done so mighty things in our lives through you. I want to assure you, you might not know this, but you are touching souls at Nile, UMC. You are changing lives. The Lord is changing lives through your prayers and your gifts and your talents. That's why I come here to, to praise him. To say thank you, to glorify him together with you. If you fail to glorify the Lord, if you fail to thank the Lord, then pride will come in your lives. Pride can cause us not to, to focus more on God. And pride removes God from the throne of our lives. If we fail to go back and thank him and glorify his name. Um, I again end the sermon by ask a question which Jesus asked, where are the nine? Where are the nine? Are you among the nine? Or you are the other foreigner, the other Samaritan who came back with a joyful noise, with a happiness, with the too much joy, thanking Jesus for he has done so great to him. May the Lord bless you so much. Thank you, Isaac. As the band comes up, we're going to be singing our closing hymn, which is Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. Now, some of you know that one. You've known it since you were a child. But I think about what we just shared. Do you lean on the everlasting arms? Or do you lean on your own? Do you lean on what you can do? Or are you like the one who came back and said, thank you. Let's stand together and sing. And as we're doing that, if you maybe need to say thank you, maybe you've kind of gotten comfortable and complacent, this may be a time to come to that altar and just lay it down before him and say thank you. There's not a person in this room, I say it often on these, nobody in this room didn't have shelter last night. Nobody in this room is hungry. Nobody in this room is suffering like so many of our brothers and sisters. We are indeed blessed. And so we need to actually sing with all the fervor to thank him because we do it by leaning on those everlasting Let's sing together. Let's lift him high. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leading on the
Almighty God, you've called us to be your children. You've called us to be your family. No matter where we are, no matter what we look like, no matter where we're from, we are yours first and foremost. And for that, we give you thanks for making us your people, brothers and sisters in Christ. As we worship today, may we go from this place and continue to worship in all we say and in all we do. As we share fellowship and a meal this afternoon, we simply ask that you would use it to fill us with your power, your strength, and your presence. That, Lord, we might be the ones who go into the world saying thank you in everything we do and in every moment. For, Lord, we are indeed grateful. We thank you for being called to be your people. And we join together in praising your name now and always. And the people of God said, Amen. Now, if you'll hang on just a minute, they're going to open up the doors and we can go ahead and eat. Um, there are some buckets there. If you can, we're just asking for donations to cut the cost of the food tonight. If you didn't bring um, any cash, we do have a card reader there for those who don't ever have anything but plastic. That's a possibility, too. But mainly, make sure you meet somebody you haven't met before. Make sure you share a meal with somebody uh, that we might grow closer together. Go from this day and celebrate together.